what is the what's the latest with uh, uh, Heston Kirsten? Heston, yeah. So he uh, had been working out at the alternate site, uh, you know, getting back acclimated to uh, you know everyday physical activity. Uh, he will be down in Florida in a week, uh, and uh, he'll continue his progression there. And um, you know, similar to what you know we put out. I mean, it'll be a uh, it'll be a slow build up process uh, for him. Uh, no need no need to to rush him as he gets back to uh, full health, full full baseball condition, and then eventually you know into games. Next question is from Dan Connolly. Matt, how difficult has it been to place these guys, um, especially considering not knowing, you know, maybe not even seeing some of the, the players? How difficult was it to do that? And do you expect a lot of, uh, you know, fluidity in the next couple of months as you kind of see how these guys perform? Yeah, I mean, I, I think we try to go about it very systematically. We, we try not to let, uh, you know, sh small samples of, of uh, performance, especially in spring training, uh, influence too much the decisions. So um, I'd say it wasn't all that difficult. I mean, there were a couple that you know, kind of had to make a call on, but uh, a lot of them slotted in, you know, where you see them now. And, you know, there, there's, there's no reason why if they don't, you know, perform well, they can't be moved up or, you know, or down. So um, I, I would say it was, it was kind of a normal process for that. Joe Treza, go ahead. Matt, what, what kind of challenge is it, especially this year with the lower level um, pitching prospects in terms of managing their workloads after um, the unprecedentedly short season last year or, you know, no season for these guys? And for guys like Grayson and for DL, is there a, a number in mind in terms of like how many more innings they'll throw compared to 2019 or how many fewer innings or things like that? Uh, not a specific number for those guys. I mean, every single pitcher, you know, we're going to be watching carefully and, and monitoring. Uh, this is a little bit of an unprecedented situation. Uh, and, you know, the roster sizes are larger. and We will have large uh, numbers of pitchers on each roster. Uh, so we will be monitoring it, uh, but also we want these guys to get their work in. So it's a, you know, it's a little bit of a double-edged sword. Next question is from Rock Kabako. Uh, what's going on with Bauman right now? Bauman, yeah, he's still down in Florida. You know, he had the, the little flare up at the alternate site last year. And uh, we're just, you know, slow build, being cautious with him, managing some discomfort in his arm. Uh, but, you know, hopefully he'll be back in by uh, the end of the month. Nathan Ruiz, go ahead. Matt, you might have asked this earlier or answered this earlier. I hopped on a little late, but just what's the overall excitement level about minor league baseball being back? Oh, extremely excited. You know, we've got uh, a bunch of new players uh, who really haven't had a chance to play in the Orioles system. We've got a bunch of new coaches who haven't really had a chance to coach in a, in a season. And it's been a long time coming. Uh, you know, I guess now over a year and a half of time uh, for a lot of, you know, new people to the org and, Everybody wants to get out there and and uh, to to play and to compete, and and so I, I think you know just about every single person is just thrilled that we're getting this opportunity and we will get to see you know how how this whole thing goes. John Mioli, go ahead. Matt, I know minor league baseball is going to be under similar protocols as the big leagues this year. Were you able to put together any kind of vaccination event for the players when everyone was all in one place to get that process rolling down in Florida? We, we have gotten – actually, our, our extended spring training group uh, was all vaccinated uh, in one shot here. Uh, Dave Walker did a great job of getting that set up. Uh, so we're really excited about that. We've been working on – the, uh, the, the group that was at spring training, uh, we were slowly getting as many players and staff uh, vaccinated as possible, and we'll be continuing to do that, you know, at, their, at the affiliates where they are now. Rich Dubroff, go ahead. Hey, Matt, what, uh, you know, Keegan, we heard that Keegan Aiken uh, suffered a cut finger uh, a week or so ago. Uh, is, he, uh, is he ready to pitch yet? He is. He'll, he'll throw a side tomorrow, and then he's 
hopefully going to make a start uh, for Norfolk on Friday. Just a reminder to enter your name in the chat if you have any more questions for Matt. Next, we'll go to Dan Connolly. Yeah, Matt, we obviously just talked about Aiken and Bauman and uh, Kerstad. Is there anybody else who's dealing with injuries um, to start the season that has to be held back a little bit? Uh, I think, you know, Nick Shufo had the, had the hand injury. Uh, we're hoping that he'll be back at the beginning of June. Um, I think you all know about Carter Baumler, and, and he's, he's looked great, and, and his, his progression has been smooth. Uh, he's handled it really well. Uh, I don't think, I don't think I'm missing anyone else maybe, but that's all I got on top of my head. John Mioli, go ahead. Matt, with so many of these guys playing so little baseball since they last played games, down in spring training, was there a general sense that guys were ahead of where you guys expected them to be and coming along slower? Where, where did you guys leave that? Uh, I was generally pleased with where the players were, really pleased with the, the energy and focus level of, of really everyone. Uh, but, you know, there were, there were a lot of things to be excited about coming out of the performances from the, the games against other teams down there in the, in the, in the inner squads, pitching and hitting and defense. Uh, and to think that a lot of them have not played in over a year, it's, it's pretty amazing. So uh, I, I was pleased with, with where they were when they came into camp. And, and that's a testament to them, you know, to the work that they put in and, and to the work that they did with our staff uh, remote, uh, you know, virtually over the last year. And, and now it's time to go play. We're all excited about that. Rich Dubroff. Uh, Matt, of the guys who were, who were in Florida for uh, extended spring training, are any of them – uh, recent uh, recent international signings and are are uh, are any of those guys expected to play for the uh, Gulf Coast uh, clubs? The guys from the Dominican. There will be a significant presence of Dominican players in extended and in uh, in the GCL this year. Uh, at, you know, currently uh, we have you know, Luis Gonzalez and. Uh, to a few of our traded four players, uh, Isaac De Leon and and Marcel Deshawn, they came to to major league. I mean, to uh, minor league spring training, and they stayed back and extended. And then we just brought a wave of uh, basically thirty players over. Most of them are uh, D Dominican players. So so yes, there there will be a significant presence of uh, the Dominican program in extended and, and in the GCL this season. Joe Treza, go ahead. Matt, will there be any sort of individualized plan or progression or for, for workload for guys like Adam Hall and Alexander Wells, like international guys who weren't able to get to a training site last year because of the pandemic and now are kind of starting from scratch after missing last season? I think that's the case for everyone, really. I mean, Adam, fortunately, we were able to get over to uh, Instructional League, and then we were also able to bring him down early uh, in, in Major League camp. So Adams had, you know, some time and a significant amount of time for buildup. But yeah, I think it's the case for for everyone. We have to uh, do our best to to manage workloads and and try and read the situation and keep guys healthy. It's going to be a challenge. I think that's going to be a challenge across baseball. Dan Connolly, go ahead. Hey, Matt. Uh Buck Britton told us that he feels like he's got eight starting pitchers for five spots at Bowie, and there's going to be a lot of piggybacking and things like that. How do you see that kind of uh, flushing out? And, I mean, is there any rhyme or reason to who starts and who piggybacks? I, I think the answer to that is we'll see. Uh, I think we've got a lot of guys that we want to build up to throw more than one inning at a time, uh, you know, two, three, you know, even four and five. So uh, I think that's – Really, the, the impetus behind it uh, is that we want to we want to build up as many of those types as possible, and not just have five starters and a bunch of one inning relievers behind them. Uh, you know, Grayson. I mean, uh, D.L. Hall will, will get the start today, and then uh, it'll follow with some other really exciting arms. Uh, you know, behind him with with Bradish and, and Kevin Smith, and and then you'll see all these other arms that'll either be piggybacking with them, you know, or or coming in relief. So. Uh, 
Um, that's really the purpose, though, is that we want to we want to develop starters or, or guys that are able to throw multiple innings.